Welcome back. I've just finished recording a video of me injecting my testosterone and while I was filming that, one little thing I did notice was a bit of air in the syringe that I was using. And it got me thinking about, you know, we've heard, is this bad for you? You know, what could happen if air gets into the syringe and then gets into your body when injecting the testosterone? So I did a little bit of quick research. I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, so do your own research or speak to your own doctor. And if you do get air into your system somehow, then go seek medical advice. But I just wanted to share a bit of general knowledge with you about what I discovered. So basically, when you're injecting the, the testosterone, you, you may get some air within the, the syringe. And you can, usually you'll see people when they're injecting, they'll, they'll flick it like that and they'll try and get all the bubbles to the top and then, and then push them out. Now, a lot of people are worried about this. They're worried about what happens if I do get some air into my body. And when you're injecting testosterone, the idea is to inject the testosterone into a muscle, right? Such as the glute where I injected earlier. And when you do that, it's usually a safe place to inject it. And if a tiny little bit of air does get in there, it's not the end of the world. The case that most people are worried about regarding air getting into your system is when the needle gets into a vein. And then, you know, if there's air in the syringe and you start to inject and some of that air gets into the vein, that air can get into your bloodstream which can cause an embolism and that may have potential risk to your system. Now, from the research I did, it seems like it takes quite a large amount of air to get in your system. I mean, almost, you know, as more than can actually fit into this syringe you know, to get in, into, into a blood system if it does get into a, a vein in order for you there to be any significant risk. So, you, from what I've read, don't take my word for it, but it seems like if you've got a little bubble or two, and even if it did go into the vein, you know, it's, you're probably not going to die from it, but it's better not to take the chance. But that's if it goes into a vein, and usually when you're injecting testosterone, you're not going to go anywhere near a vein. You're going to go directly into the muscle. Now, people still going to panic and they're going to worry about this and there is a way that you can check when you're injecting your testosterone if you are in a vein or anywhere near a risky blood vessel and how you do that is you take the injection and you inject in the spot that you want to inject but you then uh, draw a little bit in so, um, so you instead of pushing the testosterone in and like you normally would, you first draw a little bit out. You, you take the syringe and you pull the syringe out slightly. And if you notice blood coming into the syringe, then you, should, you might be at risk of being in a vein or some other kind of blood vessel. And then you should just stop. Take the syringe out and then find another place nearby that's nearby to where the muscle should be that you're injecting in and inject again and repeat the process. And you know, as long as, you, as long as you're not drawing blood when you do that, then you should be safe to inject. And then you can go ahead and inject the testosterone like you normally would. But I think a lot of people panic about this. I know I did. I was freaking out, you know, when I, first, when I did my first shot. And um, I think it's just, you know, good to be aware, be careful, find the spot you should do. You're usually safe because the glute is a large muscle, but just to be sure, take a little bit out and see if any blood is drawn and if not then you're in the right spot and you can inject and yeah obviously do your own homework do some research before you start this, especially if you're self injecting because it's a little bit of a tricky process and you need to know what you're doing and I advise you if you can't the only reason you should be self injecting is if your doctor can't do it for you like in my case my doctor's in a different country at the moment so he can't do my injection for me and I did my research and I've done it a couple of times before. So yeah, I hope this video helps you and good luck, be safe and be strong. Cheers.